Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Chairpersons, for your kind introductions. Thank you, Manoj, Banshi, Arvind, for your kind invitation for <clears throat> to come to it. Indore. I've never been to Indore, so it's been lovely. For the last two days, I've almost eaten about 5,000 calories. So first of all, I would probably like to apologize when I'm talking about 800 kilocalorie diets because I have committed, uh, I've not been able to stick to the diet. <clears throat> and yesterday, somebody gave an advice on Gandhiji saying that you have to uh, not eat uh, good for three days before speaking. So I have eaten a lot of calories, but I'm still speaking. So, so thank you very much. Uh, so sorry for that. So this area has been an area of my specific interest for a number of years. Now, anybody who is doing direct study and drinking that soups and shakes, uh, I am to be partly blamed for it because I was on the Diabetes UK Research Board. I was on the board that gave Roy Taylor five million pounds to do the direct study. And we have been monitoring on it and still we've been uh, involved, I've been involved in the NHS diabetes prevention and remission programs. So this is some of the data. I'm going to talk about the studies, share some data from the UK, and then specifically talk from an Indian or South Asian perspective, which we have been looking into. Now, this is a famous Chinese proverb, and I've always believed in it. It said that superior doctors prevent the disease, medical doctors treat the disease up before evident, and inferior doctors, which is probably people like me and most of us in the room, treat the full-blown disease. So prevention, especially in the case of type 2 diabetes, is something very, very important. Now, this is the piece of work I did for about uh, uh, 15 or 20 years ago for the UK government, basically trying to look at how we could prevent type 2 diabetes. And this is what I call the, 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 the McCrilly curve. So it looks at three things. One is the upstream, one is the midstream, and one is the downstream prevention. The best prevention you can do is what we call upstream prevention. This is about changing the behavior of people, be it at the level of the schools, be it at the level of uh, making um, uh, sugary food uh, expensive, making public health programs like you can call it physical activities, yogas and stuff like that. So you start young. And then you have the midstream uh, prevention programs where you change the lifestyle of people in such a way that the environment changes. And then you have the upstream program where you screen people for pre-diabetes and prevent them from progressing to diabetes and then to, to treat it. Now, this has been uh, published in the NICE guidelines, which I was a part of, looking at diabetes prevention at a population level. Now, when it comes to prevention of diabetes, I think we have got enough evidence. We don't need more research in this. So the diabetes prevention programs have been held in every, every uh, ethnic group of the world. So in the Chinese, you had the Dashing study, Finnish diabetes program, diabetes prevention program, Indian diabetes prevention program. And all of them have said that if we detect people at the pre-diabetes level, doesn't matter how you define it, and then make them lose 5% of the body weight or do 30 minutes of physical activity, then you decrease it. And then you decrease it by about 58% by lifestyle and about 30% by, 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 by giving metformin. Although there is a slight difference, and this is something very important, uh, which we need to look into, especially when you're talking about diabetes remission. And this is about uh, the difference in population. So the Indian Diabetes Prevention Program, the lifestyle and metformin were almost the same. So based on these things, in the UK, we launched two programs. One is called the NHS Diabetes Prevention Program, and the another one is the NHS Diabetes Remission Program. So the, this is the basis of the NHS Diabetes Pre Prevention Program, and this is how it looks at. So it's looking at prevention, people with diabetes supported for self-management in primary care, and people with diabetes with complications in secondary care. So it actually looks at the whole program from pre-diabetes to prevention of the complication. So when it comes to the diabetes prevention program, it is a nine-month uh, journey. It involves 13 sessions done both face-to-face -face and digitally, in which there is a one-to-one -one coaching for, for, for people with prediabetes to go through this, uh, this program. So now let us look at the data to see how we are doing. 
Now, one thing we got to understand is that we had two years of the pandemic, which had an effect on the program. But generally, if you look at the uptake of the program, it has been going up. So pre people, when, once they reach the age of 40 years, they get a letter to have what is known as the NHS vascular screening program. So they have a vascular screening in which their blood pressure is checked, the cholesterol is stuck, and their HP1C is done. And this should be offered to all the population, especially at the risk of diabetes. For a South Asian perspective, we have been saying that it should be offered at the age of 30 years. And once if they're detected, they're put in the program, and you can see the uptake of the program is very good. On a monthly basis, the NHS DPP, there have been a few dips, but generally uh, it, has, it has been going on well. And this is the data that's been published uh, showing how, how it's been going on. During the COVID pandemic, one of the big challenges was that we used to have a face-to-face -face program, but we had to make it digital. Uh, and you could see that the uptake for the digital has been going up and including remote, remote, remote program. And these are the different groups. What is very interesting to see is the age distribution, as you would expect, is slightly uh, younger for, for, for the digital uh, than, than, than the face-to-face. Interestingly, with any of these programs, you want to know how many people have completed the program. So if you look at the uh, nearly about a quarter million participants, the completion attended about 60% of the session with nearly 50% completion rate. Again, indicating that if you have a program and if you have a motivated population, then people, people, people do, do, do complete the program. And what are we finding? So in terms of the weight loss, with the face-to-face -face weight loss, you're getting about two kilograms in weight. This is what you would expect from any of the, any of the interventions uh, programs uh, or all the clinical trials. Digital is slightly higher, maybe a slightly more motivated population. And complete weight loss, again, digital, a bit higher than remote. And now if we compare all these factors, depending upon the age, the ethnicity, what we find is that the weight loss and the completion of program is, is almost is almost identical. Again, showing that if you have got a diabetes prevention program and if you roll it out, the uptake in a general community is actually very good. We generally tend to think that people will do better or not, but they generally do 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 better. And you can you can see that there's not much difference between face to face and intervention uh, and, and digital programs. So the next, quickly, I'm going to move on to what is known as the NHS Low Calorie Diet Program. The NHS Low Calorie Diet uh, Program is actually based on the direct study. Just to remind ourselves about the direct study. So this was a direct study to, call, to help people cause diabetes remission. The patient population in the study was anybody who had type 2 diabetes diagnosed within five years. And in this group of patients, uh, they, all the medications were stopped. Uh, people who were already on insulin were not a uh, part of this program. And once all the medications were stopped, and this included diabetes medication, blood pressure medication, and including cholesterol medication. Once it was stopped, the patients were put on, uh, on a, on a low-calorie diet, which was about 800 to 900, 825 to 850 kilocalorie diet. This was total liquid replacement diet. And this is something very, very important to understand. It was not calorie reduction. It was total liquid replacement diet. And this diet was uh, popularly called in the UK as the soups and shakes diet. The patients were given this diet for a period of 12 weeks till they attained what was called as the ideal weight. And once they attained that, then, they were, then the food was reintroduced or what was called the reintroduction phase. And this is what was shown that if you look into it, so the people who are able to attain 15 kilograms in weight loss, they in, in them, nearly 90% of them, actually, the diabetes went into remission. And the remission was defined as a normal HbA1c without any medication. So this is what was found. So what is the, what is the, uh, the thing of the NHS LCD direct and droplet rates? And again, you can see that the mean weights are about 100 kilograms in this group. And if you look at the distribution of the referrals by age, sex, deprivation, BMI, ethnicity, and years of diagnosis, what you really find is it's, it's, it's probably slightly more in the 50 to 54. Deprivation, again, in the lowest quartiles of deprivation, 
the, the referral rate is less. BMI, again, the maximum referrals you get between 30 to 34. Years of diagnosis, under one is the maximum referrals, and then it goes down. And in the terms of ethnicity, it is almost reflects the ethnic population of the UK uh, between, between the white and South Asians. <clears throat> and now let's look at the retention rates. So how these patient population doing on a 800 kilocalorie diet? So if you look into it, nearly at the end of the 12 months that we are looking at, nearly half the population, which is quite a big number, is actually in the program, which is quite, quite big. Because what you've got to understand is that these people are going to have diabetes remission, which means that diabetes is going to disappear. And that is a big, big incentive. And that means all the complications and everything. Now, if you look at the mean percentage of weight loss in this population group, and again, you find that at 12 months, nearly 10% 10, 10 of the weight is lost, which is approximately around 10 kilograms. The maximum weight loss is around the three months. You would expect that because that is the one when people are on total diet replacement. But even at 10 kilograms, which means that 80% of that 50% of the population, the diabetes is, 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 is going to disappear. So this is, this is, this is all um, extremely, extremely good. Now, in the next uh, few slides, I'm going to try and give you a perspective from a, from a South Asian or an Indian population as to how these programs are doing. So when it comes to diabetes prevention program, we know that the data and the studies have been done in an Indian population, and the data is almost the same. But when it comes to the NHS diabetes remission programs or the direct study, the direct study did not have a representative Asian population. Direct study was done in 99% white European population of uh, Northern England and Southern Scotland. So you could see it was a completely different population group. And this is, uh, brings down a certain questions that we've been asking on behalf of South Asian Health Foundation, UK, both to the UK government and, and to the international communities. Now, one of these things, this was a paper I did with my friend, uh, Professor Kunti, a few years ago, where we looked at the representative South Asian populations. And we looked in 12 major cardiovascular trials with diabetes agents. And what we found was the representation of South Asians was extremely low. And what we need to understand is that the most of diabetes that's going to happen in the next 10 decades is going to be in what we call in the, in the Asian uh, continent, starting from the Horn of Africa up to, the, up to the Australasia. That is where the diabetes is there. Although in the white, and all the studies that we are still getting is in the white European populations. And we need to ask ourselves, are these really representative? And the reason we ask this question is, this is the study we did a few years ago from Leicester with Kamlesh and colleagues. And what we are really looking at is we're looking at only a small thing. What we wanted to know when it comes to the risk of diabetes, it is not we are looking at uh, the complications of diabetes like osteoarthritis or OSA. We are looking purely on the glycemic uh, level of obesity. So what we found was for an obesity, for a BMI of 30 for a white European, the, the corresponding BMI in a South Asian was 22 in a male and nearly 21 in a male, in a female. So which effectively means when it comes to type 2 diabetes, the, the, the threshold or the, or the borders we have for, for ideal BMI is between 19.5 to 22.5, which is extremely, extremely low and almost difficult to maintain. Because we also know that once the BMI drops to less than 19.5, your risk of dying from any kind of uh, your mortality actually starts going up. This is, again, we sh uh, have shown it in our other things about South Asians having a lower BMI compared to white Europeans. The other issue is, this is some of the work that's been done by Venkat Raman and colleagues, uh, and, uh, Narayan uh, and colleagues, which have actually shown that the reduced beta cell function in the Asian Indians, and this is something we also need to, need to, need to consider. Uh, and there's been a lot of work. So this brings us to this concept of what we call the twin cycle hypothesis and how it, 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 it differs. 
So we all know in this twin cycle hypothesis, you have got a positive calorie balance, which can come in from any points, any extra calorie that is eaten contributes to positive calorie balance. The other factor that is responsible about this positive calorie balance is your basal metabolic rate. Where your basal metabolic rate is high or low, it also matters how much muscle mass you have caught. This positive calorie balance can actually lead to increased liver fat, especially if you don't have much subcutaneous stores or brown fat in the body, leading to increased liver insulin resistance, increased basal secretion, increased plasma glucose. But there's also another cycle that is going on, which is the increased VLDL, TG, increased islet fats in the pancreas cells, resulting in, 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 in decreased acute insulin response. So when we are actually talking about a direct study, what it actually shows is when you calorie restricted, you're not only attacking the insulin resistance, but you're also having a positive effect on the beta cell function because the, the small amount of fat which is there in the beta cell is also going, which is actually regenerating the beta cell. And this is a very, very important concept to really, really understand from, a, from, a, from an Indian perspective. Now, in the last uh, couple of my slides, uh, Chairpersons, I would like to look at this, what I call the tale of two Indians, about the two different types of diabetes that, that exist. So most of the work from the Western understanding of type 2 diabetes actually comes from Alberti's work on Pima Indians. So poor Alberti, he went and drained, made all the Pima Indians enemic by taking out the bloods. And that is how the concept of type 2 diabetes in the Western world came in. Now let's look at type 2 diabetes. So this is two group of populations. One is the Asian Indians from Chennai and Pima Indians. Both of them have got very high prevalence of diabetes, above 50% by the age of 55 years. The difference is the obesity profile of the Pima Indians is they are very obese. Their BMI is greater than 33, while the Asian Indians from Chennai, their Athena, their BMI is about 25. The higher 2R uh, glucose for the Pima Indians and the higher fasting for the Chennai Indians. Both of them have got two-thirds of pre-diabetes as IGT for uh, Asian Indians is IFG. Important thing, the Pima Indians nearly have 2.5 to 5 times increase in insulin resistance, while the Asian Indians have got half to one-third decreased insulin thing. And this brings in to the question of the, what we call the heterogeneity of type 2 diabetes. So one is about increased metabolic load, decreased insulin action, adiposity, physical inactivity, 2-hour glucose, lifestyle metformin. This is what is the Pima Indian or the insulin resistance model. And this is decreased insulin secretion, and this is the Asian Indian model. And what we know is that in terms of diabetes remission, because it is, tackles both insulin resistance and beta cell, it affects the both. The other final question is there is this whole thing about epigenetics. So when we are talking about prevention of diabetes and remission of diabetes, are we starting too late? So e even on all my slides, I did not start where it's supposed to start. And it's supposed to start in the fetus, in the maternal health. If the fetus gets a maternally good nutrition, it will grow up with less insulin resistance and more of the beta cells. This is something... To, to, for us to all think. So, <clears throat> Mr. Chairpersons, so in summary, what I have to say to you is it is possible to prevent diabetes and prevent all types of diabetes, now even type 1 diabetes, including some of the work that's coming out. And it's possible to prevent in all ethnicities across the globe through effective public health program. The NHS Diabetes Prevention Program and the NHS Diabetes Remission Program are actually point in this direction. Early interventions to promoting well-being and health through garment policy in early childhood is more effective. It is beyond medicine. It is, it is the policy that will is going to decide. And diabetes remission has not been studied well in a South Asian population. We need more studies. Ideal weight in Indian population and reduced beta cell mass is an issue, and we still don't know what that is. And effective diabetes prevention remission perhaps starts at the fetal level. Thank you.